Wednesday morning, Special Counsel Robert Mueller's team and Manafort's defense lawyers will deliver their closing arguments, sure to be impassioned, detailed speeches that look back over the 10 days of testimony. Then the jury will deliberate the 18 criminal bank fraud, tax and foreign banking charges. This is the first case brought to trial by Mueller, who is currently leading the probe into allegations of Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election. Here's what both sides may tell the jury on Wednesday. Without a doubt, the prosecution will try to convince the jury that Manafort sent fake documents to banks, lied to his accountants and bookkeeper, signed federal disclosures that failed to report his foreign banking to federal agencies, and pushed his Ukrainian lobbying money into lavish purchases, avoiding income taxes on millions of dollars. Mueller's team will look back at the testimony of witnesses like Cindy Laporta, an accountant who admitted she was wrong when she sent a fake loan agreement to a bank, and Heather Washkin, the bookkeeper who denied that the Manafort profit statements that went to banks and bore her firm's mark came from her. Prosecutors will point to the parade of vendors who kicked off the trial by saying they received mysterious foreign wire transfers to pay for Manafort's animal skin jackets and Lux home furnishings, then to the bevy of bankers who claimed they had wished they had known Manafort's loan applications contained lies. They will also likely revisit the testimony of Manafort's longtime right-hand man Rick Gates, who admitted to a host of moral and criminal failures in the witness box, while underscoring how he was part of the larger scheme for Manafort to relish a millionaire lifestyle. The defense if defendant didn't have to present anything during the trial, it's entirely the responsibility of the prosecutors to prove their case. The government has not met its burden of proof, Manafort attorney Kevin Downing said Tuesday outside the court. But it's not entirely clear yet how Manafort's lawyers will crystallize the testimony from 10 days of witnesses. In the opening statement to the jury July 31, defense attorney Thomas Zanel described how Manafort trusted his banking and tax contacts, his bookkeeper, even Gates, to make sure things were done right. It appears then, based on the opening statement, that the defense will point the finger at the people around Manafort who admitted in court they did wrong on his behalf. The defense team will reuse the witness statements, making clear to the jurors that they should doubt Manafort's crimes were his alone, done willfully. Whether it will work is anyone's guess. Juries are notoriously hard to predict, and there are several books worth of complicated information in this case. But the jurors for Manafort appear to have bonded during their service on the high-profile case. Together they celebrated a birthday with cake in the trial's first week. Many have taken notes throughout the trial, and have loudly responded, Yes, Your Honor, when Judge T.S. Ellis has given them directions to stay away from news about the case and from conferring with others. The 12 jurors will have to decide Manafort's guilt or innocence unanimously. The jury could vote guilty or not in nearly any configuration of the 18 charges, though it's most likely that all the tax crimes and all the foreign banking crimes will each receive the same verdict. The defense team did not spend much time separating the counts within those groups. The bank fraud is more of a count-by-count -count determination, with different actions, loans, and banks playing into each of the nine charges. And then, even if Manafort is acquitted on all, he still has another struggle ahead. His second criminal trial, for alleged foreign lobbying crimes and money laundering conspiracy, is set to begin in five weeks before yet another jury in Washington, D.C.